Um, today, thank you. Uh, so today we are present for from two organizations who are implementing culture helps. Um, me and myself and my colleague Henrique, we are from SUSA. So my name is Natalia Martinenko. I'm a project coordinator of culture helps, and I will also invite Henrique to present herself. Hi everyone. Uh, yes, I'm project administrator of Culture Helps at SUSA in Berlin, and I'm really happy we're all here today. Thank you. And also, uh, the second organization who is a partner of Culture Helps is Insha Osvita, and here is Brad and Lilia. Lilia, I'm welcome you to present yourself also. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Lilia. I'm from Insho Svita. I'm a project manager of Culture Helps and I'm really happy to be here. I will answer all your questions today in the chat. So be open to answer all the questions you have. Thank you. So we will start our presentation now. I will uh, present my screen with you. So first we will talk um, about culture helps in general, and then we'll go into more details about collaboration grants in particular. And also we will have a Q&A session in the end of the presentation. So let me just close the and about the presentation. Uh, so some general information about our project. Culture Helps Cultura de Pomahaya, it's a two-year project established um, with a three-level uh, grant scheme for civil society and cultural actors that help Ukrainians displaced by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The focus of our project is to uh, support activities that support accessibility and integration through culture into new realities and communities for internally displaced people in Ukraine and refugees in uh, Creative Europe countries. The project is co-funded by the European Union. Um, so within our Culture Helps project, we have the following activities. We have consultations that are aimed at supporting art managers and grant writers in strength, strengthening their capacity to apply for, for Culture Helps. We have online community calls that serve as a set help desk providing assistance with grant applications and facilitating matchmaking between organizations. We have webinars on mental health awareness in culture. Also, based on the webinars, we will develop a toolkit um, with uh, experienced psychologists, social workers, and trainers on cultural work and social issues of integration and trauma in at least four languages. And also, as a part of activities, we have online networking meetings for collaborations for cultural managers and artists to share their good practices and experiences, build their capacity through established peer-to-peer -peer formats, and make connections that can last beyond the project duration. Uh, now we will talk about more about collaboration grants that you are interested in applying for. So this um, type of grant, it offers support for cultural organizations that emphasize work with people who have been forced to move to safer regions of Ukraine or other Creative Europe countries because of the Russian uh, war in Ukraine. The project idea um, must be focused on displaced people or refugees, facilitation of their integration into new contexts through culture, and offer activities that respond to protesting war trauma and support of their mental health. Additional efforts should be put into involving families and children in the project activities. And the proposed activities can have a form of workshops, co-creation processes, educational projects, art therapy, or something similar. Um, some facts about collaboration grants program. Uh, in total, we will have three calls for collaboration grants in 23 and 24. This one is the first one in our project cycle. Each call with, will support around 10 collaboration grants. 50% of the grants will be distributed in Ukraine, while other 50% of the grants will be distributed in Creative Europe countries. Uh, the maximum amount of the grant is 25,000 euros for collaboration of two organizations, and maximum for three organizations is 40,000 of euros. Then I will pass the floor to my colleague Henrike to uh, continue with the presentation. Thank you. Um, yes, so who can apply? It's nonprofit organizations, initiatives, or public institutions. And 
all applicants need to prove that they're not for profit work uh, doing and the organizations need to be based either in ukraine or any other part, country that takes part in the creative europe um, framework program um, so at least one of the applicants need to be needs to be actively working on the integration of displaced people or refugees from ukraine into new realities and communities through culture and there is in particular a focus on families and children in that work. Um, and the collaboration pro uh, project that you will be conducting cannot be co-funded by any other creative European funding scheme. Mm, thank you. Um, yes, <laughs> again, who can, can apply for the support? So it's a collaboration with either two or three partner organizations. If there are three partner organizations, two can come from, uh, can be register, registered in Ukraine and one in another uh, Creative Europe country, or one can be in Ukraine and two in different other Creative Europe countries. If you do not yet have a partner, that's not a problem because uh, we will come back to this in a moment. We will offer community calls in July where you can meet potential other partners to form a collaboration. So what's the application next steps? Um, the applications and the proposed budget, you can find uh, the links for this on the to the website, which is linked here and we, which we will also apply uh, supply for you. Then the application needs to be done in English and if you have any questions, technical or others, please send an email to our culturehelps at susa.org uh, website, uh, email address. The timeline of this call is that by the 3rd of August, um, we close the applications. The, then we take August in order to select uh, the um, grantees through an independent jury and all the activities that you would like to do in your collaboration project need to end by March 31st next year. And after the ending of the project activities, you have a month uh, for the reporting that is the narrative and final financial report. Uh, so the latest by April 30th, this should happen. Thank you. And then we come to the selection process and criteria. The, as I said, the selection process. First, um, we have a check of eligibility. So please make sure that your project application um, is eligible for the call. And then the, all the proposals that are eligible will be evaluated by an independent jury. Um, so what's this jury taking uh, into consideration will be the relevance to the grant objectives the organization's portfolio and project concept, then the quality and uniqueness of the partnership between your, partner, your collaboration partners, the feasibility of the project concept, uh, the contribution to building a long-term relation between the collaboration partners and uh, environmental awareness uh, that's included in your application proposal. So, as I said, if you do not yet have a partner, that's not a problem. We, um, maybe uh, in case, maybe you can turn off your microphone, that would be great. Thank you. Um, thanks. So yes, if you don't have a partner yet, uh, we have two community calls on July 4th and 18th at three o'clock burning the time, four o'clock Kiev time. Uh, where you will be able to meet other interested partners, uh, people that are interested in doing a partnership, and we will moderate this community call in order to um, bring you together or potentially working together. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so here uh, I will uh, take also the floor to continue with some frequently asked questions as, as we receive now a lot of inquiries into our emails. Um, so we just collected some main points that were like most popular among these requests. 
Um, so in the eligibility criteria, you can see this uh, point that will be evaluated by the jury, the uniqueness of the partnership. What does it mean? It means that um, the proposal should uh, contain like this proposal that will contain innovative and unconventional collaborations that bring together different organizations, individuals or entities to address the intersection of culture and mental health in new and creative way will be more will receive more points in the end. So this um, please just take this in mind when you will be um, creating your proposal. Um, also about budget limitations. In our um, open call text, you can uh, find the link to the budget file. Please um, learn it. Also uh, fill it when you will be applying for the um, for the grant. But um, if you ask, if there are any limitations to the um, budget, so we do not we cannot support any like infrastructural um, uh, accounts. Uh, also, the question can be, for example, if you are a profit organization and can you apply, for example, theater? Yes, so you can apply in this regard, but also the leading partner in your collaboration should be a non-profit organization. And also your project will be checked for being non-profit, so please also take this in mind. Um, another also like very popular question, what are the eligible countries to apply for our uh, collaboration grant? So all EU countries, they are part of Creative Europe uh, program. And also on our website in the text of the open call, you can find the link for the countries from non-EU participating countries, but who are in the list and who are eligible to apply. For example, Ukraine are in the list of these countries. And also uh, there are some questions, for example, there are two organizations from EU countries, are we eligible to apply? Unfortunately, no, we can support uh, collaboration of two organizations only from Ukraine, but in case if you are like if you are a project of two organizations from EU who are interested to apply and have a nice project idea, we welcome you to participate in our community calls in order to find a partner from Ukraine also. So at this point, um, we will stop our presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. And now we open floor for questions from you. So you can just uh, switch on your mic and start talking. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Hello, yes. Uh, super. Uh, my name is Tanya. Um, presented uh, the organization from Ukraine. I have um, two questions. Um, uh, first of all, um, partnership uh, Ukraine Georgia. Uh, we have project on art uh, rehabilitation of children affected by the war in Ukraine. Um, we organize um, the rehabilitation in Ukraine and. Uh, in Georgia and organize um, the ex uh, exhibition uh, of um, um, the participants uh, this rehabilitation. Uh, is uh, it possible uh, for your program, that project? Um, yeah, in general, it's possible, but it also depends on the background of your organizations. Um, in the eligibility criteria of the open call text, you can also find this point that uh, at least one organization who is applying for collaboration grant needs to have a background in cultural um, field. So it's mm -hmm. important, for example, if you are more working on health issues uh, like rehabilitation, so it's important that you collaborate with a cultural organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand. Thank you. Uh, and one more question is, um, uh, in a project, uh, in budget, uh, can we rent uh, the apartment for the um, for the people who work uh, in uh, our project, uh, um, in, um, in 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 uh, from individual person, uh, do it understand? Uh, rent apartments from individual person, not from uh, the entrepreneurs. Yeah, thank you for this question. I think that this is possible, but maybe also uh, Henrike would like to add something to this point. Yes, I uh, maybe I have a, a question to this. So it would be, let's just assume, uh, people coming from Georgia to Ukraine for a workshop. 
and they yes. for a certain amount of time would stay in a private room rather than a hotel right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes yes as long as the person giving the room uh, can provide an invoice we need invoices for reporting mm -hmm. the document the, the costs then is this can also be a private person uh, yes yes i understand thank you very much Thank you, Tanya, for your questions. Um, are there any other questions? Let's go ahead with them. Um, can I ask a question? Hello. Sure. Hello. Yes, um, I'm Inga from, from Lithuania. So just a small clarification because I maybe I missed, but if uh, if we two organizations from the from Lithuania who works with the uh, uh, communities Ukraine. Uh, refugees uh, communities and the, we have also a culture aspect and the trauma informed aspect so if you want to uh, apply so we need uh, we need a partner from ukraine yeah yeah that's true okay so uh, if you if it will be two of us and plus one from ukraine so we can we can apply for a uh, 40 40 000, yeah Yes, yes, for 30,000 euros. It's like a maximum. Okay. Yeah. Of yeah can I okay. Um, yeah. Is, is it, uh, is, do we have to have our self uh, uh, money for this project? Sorry that I asked. I think that Henrique wanted to add something to the previous question. Very sorry. So it would be two, oh. you, two organizations from Lithuania, of one yeah. from Lithuania and one from another country. No, so um, yeah, maybe we could uh, take two from Lithuania and one from from Ukraine then, because as I understood, only two uh, two organizations from the uh, EU country, one from Lithuania, they cannot participate. Like they have a have a partner in Ukraine, yeah. Yes, and the okay. two partners that are involved from an EU country need to be from different countries. So it could be one ah, from so Lithuania, one from Ukraine, okay. and one from a third country. Okay, um, so it, it, we yes. cannot be two of us uh, from Lithuania, yeah? We don't know. Okay, 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 thank you. So it's a good, uh, good point to clarify. Thank you. So like uh, from EU, it should be two different countries. Different countries. And mm -hmm. one also from Ukraine, uh, also to uh, work on integration more. And uh, if it's like uh, two organizations from Ukraine, this is possible. And then okay. one from EU. Thank you. Thank you for your question. So is there any other questions? Oh, I see something in the chat. So I will, um, if you would like, Inga, you can speak out loud of, or if not, I can also read it out loud and then also respond it too. Uh, yeah, I can also speak, uh, but I just can't um, uh, get on my video. I'm sorry for this. I, I have a question. Can also a cultural product be funded, like, for example, um, a film or, or a special a process in a film, like, for example, a post-production uh, or is it like needed that, um, um, you know, this kind of social um, work with people on, on site is also involved? I think that in this regard, I would need um, maybe more information about this post-production of a film, because unfortunately, like, uh, in general, our uh, grant is not focused on like production or post-production mm -hmm. of films, because its main focus is to, um, like, to work with cultural activities that uh, integrate people into new communities, um, like people from Ukraine into new communities where they are now. So I'm not sure, but it also like depends on the background of, um, like now it's, uh, for me, it's difficult to say, maybe you can tell us some more details about the background of this post-production um, and we can see. Yeah, yeah, actually a film uh, is quite about this topic. Uh, it's about my mother who is a refugee from Ukraine in Germany, in Berlin, um, and going through processes of integration and adaptation to a new community. And um, yeah, the idea would be also to show this uh, film when it's ready uh, also to other uh, Ukrainian refugees uh, here in Germany and also to use it somehow to connect them and to 
overcome difficulties um yeah but what i'm not myself sure yet how it could be interested also for for ukrainians in ukraine so um, yeah searching yeah, at this point um but also uh, uh like our collaboration grant it means that like there should be at least two organizations that are applying for it so I'm not sure if you are like representing also with your project if you have uh, this criteria. But no, I have one organization now only from from Germany, so it would mean I would search for for a Ukrainian partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, in this regard, it would be also good to have a partner. But actually, I think that um, our main focus of the projects that we will be working with and funding that are you know like more direct. Um, direct activities that are connected to our target audience, like to refugees and internally displaced people uh, with the integration into communities. I'm not sure that film can be applied for uh, this type of grant. Mm -hmm. But if it's connected with kind of event uh, uh, afterwards, for example, that is like, yeah, having this aim to, to help. Yeah. Yeah, I think that it it was like what I meant at the beginning that it depends on the background. Like just mm -hmm. production of the film, I think that no. But if it's connected also to some activities, some like integration activities, cultural slash integrational activities for uh, refugees from Ukraine, so I think it can be considered. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you for your question. I see one more question from Daria Levchenko. Daria, if you would like to speak out loud, you can. Um, uh, put on your microphone or otherwise I will read your question. Uh, sure, I was just wondering if we could dedicate part of the project to a small mi micro grant scheme, like one or two grants for realization of a project. If, for example, in the design of our bigger project, uh, we have uh, a part where uh, refugees who or people who are internally displaced develop the projects that will engage even more people into activities they produce. If it's a project that has multiple parts, can we have uh, an article in the budget dedicated to the micro grants? Some small amount of money that we can just grant to our uh, future participants in the project so that they can realize their project ideas within our bigger project. Yeah, thank you for your question. I think maybe Henrique, you can step in for answering. Thank you. Yes, I think in general, there is nothing no argument against it, it as long as it makes sense within the bigger frame of your project and it also has to be uh, like the the, the micro grants then also have to be reported in the way that your overall project is reported and mm -hmm. if you have more detailed questions about what kind of micro grants that would be or what for then maybe we can uh, separately talk about it again if you need uh, support on uh, from the application yeah, I might just get back to you with an email later to not Great. worry everybody about the yes. details. Sounds good. Right, thank you. Thank you for the question, Daria. Anyone else? With the questions, please just switch on your microphone. Okay, I don't see any hands, any more questions. But if you come up, you just can switch on the microphone at any moment. But if no questions, I think that we uh, came to the end of our info session. I would like to thank everyone for our participation and for your questions. Um, we will come back to you with a record of today's session and also with a um, document with frequently asked questions and with a presentation also. And uh, you have our, you will have our um, email and maybe you already have it, uh, so you can come up with any questions at any point and we will be also online consulting you. And also, as uh, Henrique already uh, mentioned during the presentation, uh, we have community calls scheduled on 4th and 18th of July. For those who are interested to find partners for their projects, I welcome you to participate in these community calls and we will share the information about community calls very soon. So at this point, I would like to thank everyone and be in touch.